Blake, you're We're rolling. back. We're back. It's been a while. It has been a while. Yes and no. Well, I think we did one last week, didn't we? Yes, we always do podcasts once a week. We're, uh, I'm a little under the weather today. I was getting better, and then I sound like a... Uh, I don't know. My nose is just clogged. <laughs> you're you're getting you the tail time. end of the winter sickness. But guess what? Even though I sound like shit... We're still doing a podcast. We're still here. We've got some great info today. This podcast comes out tomorrow. Woo! So we're pushing Charlie to the limits on the one-day turnaround. That's not pushing it. Give him a couple hours. <laughs> uh, what are we talking about today? Lots of stuff. But let's go ahead and start locally here in Boise. Um, let's talk about the village. We've got some interesting stuff happening. What what just got approved? A An 85-foot sky bridge. Right? Yes. The village is expanding. And... Oh, for those of you listening, this sky bridge does not go across Eagle Road. Everybody thinks that the sky people bridge... Thought, so many people were like, oh, it's the one that's going to go over Eagle Road. I'm like, yeah, not yet. We're not doing a nature bridge. Yes, like, we're not doing that yet. But this bridge will go over... If you are going northbound on okay. Eagle Road... And you turn right into the village, which will kind of shoot you into that main entrance. Where the big deers are yes. in the winter. Yes. And uh, up to your right is Axiom. You've got H&M on your left. There's going to be this beautiful sky bridge. Well, it there is a lot of wasted space up there. Not that we need to like fill up every square inch of space, but like I don't think that's a, a negative thing to expand that. Because you go to any other city and it's like all the spaces accounted for. Like you go to Vegas and you're like, all right, this space is used. This space is used. There's they not like a, a bunch job. of open, which I think a lot of people like that open space, but. In uh, taking into account, um, the real estate impact of this is pretty interesting from my viewpoint. We've obviously got in and out Burger proposed to come. I don't know the latest on that. I think that they're still working through some of the logistics of the village location. I know the Boise location got approved, but it's different jurisdictions that are approving those applications to the city. So like the one that's supposed to go at the village has to go through Meridian planning uh, and zoning, all of that stuff. Boise one got the approved. The Boise though, one right? got approved. Um, in and out burger recently posted that they will have one open and live in 2023. So Here. that's good news. Like the, in Idaho. Yes. For in and out burger well, fans that one will be opening this year. But I don't know if it's going to be the Boise one first or the village one. So tying this all into the village expansion, from my understanding, what they're building is 37,000 square feet of additional retail. So that's not a ton. If you look at like the full footprint of the village, like retail wise, that's, you know, probably seven more tenants, depending on the size of what tenants occupy. I think that there's like a North Face like store, a Patagonia store going in there. I thought there was just like double the square footage of the whole village. Did that get declined? No. So this is just like that front entrance area. So oh, okay. doubling it would be like going across the street. Oh, and okay. like and oh, really. Yeah. So it's just those two pads right now. Like if you drive through it, you look and you're like, oh, well, that doesn't look that big. When they build on those, it's going to be massive. Yeah. It's going to be really weird for like the eye sight of like looking at it now and going, oh, what's this going to become? it's going to be like massive. Like they got approved to go up an additional 20 feet from what was allowed and what that's going to do. It's going to kind of encapsulate the village. So like from the road, you're not going to see the village anymore. You're going to see the sky bridge in the apartments and the apartment side of it is kind of interesting because so talking back to the in and out burger, I already think that there's a parking issue at the village. Do you agree? When it's busy? Yes. Like, like there's already a parking issue and let's add 30, 37,000 more square feet of retail and 550 apartments. Well, they're going to do structural parking, but I think that's only for the apartments. Ah, right. I think so. I read that. You're right. So are they going to, cause are they going to have to do like a parking garage across the street? They have room for it or something. I mean, I just, that, that's one thing that like access parking and, um, is super important in a real estate development um, shopping center like this. And then you throw in In-N-Out Burger and you already look at like the chaos that Chick-fil-A creates over in that corner. Now throw it in the middle of the village. Like the lines for In-N-Out will be similar, if not worse than in like Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, 
I mean, that was, that's the first concern I think to everyone is like, how logistically, how is this traffic going to work? And what is their like five or 10 year play? Because I know that expanding the village is a huge positive thing for Meridian and in like that being like the new kind of Mecca of the treasure Valley. I just don't see them spending enough time, energy and resources in the, the development planning phase because like as a consumer, I can only see this just becoming more and more of an issue from like an access perspective. I mean, they added that light to get in going southbound on Eagle road, mm-hmm. which has helped the flow. Now there's a stoplight right in front of that entrance, but like that's not going to solve the problem. I mean, there's so much traffic over there and nobody like right now I, I avoid Eagle road between, you know, the freeway in the village because of just so many stoplights and like adding more stoplights isn't going to fix your problem. Also city Meridian fix your potholes because yeah, it's getting just swerving in and out and trap like, <laughs> geez, I don't have like a, like a nice truck that I'm just like barreling through the holes with, you know, blow your tires out. So my struts are going to fall off. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be an interesting, it'll be interesting to see it play out because like, like you said right now, like it's there's congestion without an extra like thirty seven yeah <laughs> yeah without the thirty seven square uh, thousand square foot of retail and in and out I mean come on yeah those in and outs are going to be busy for two years straight oh it's going to be crazy like I think in and out burger is one of those only franchise concepts that doesn't have like a honeymoon phase because they consistently are busy and it's kind of like Chick Fil A too yes you know, props to them because they have a great business model. It's like lean and mean. We make 10 different products. Like that's it. I also didn't, I haven't been there since they remodeled. Did they just remodel the inside or did they remodel like the drive through area of Chick-fil-A? I have no clue. I haven't been since. Yeah. But let's go check it out. Right, let's go. <laughs> Aria would love to go. Uh, Do you have a good Christmas? New year? I did. It was very relaxing. I'm kind of glad it's over though, because the way it was like laid out this year was like Christmas on the weekend. <laughs> it's like take a solid two weeks off, like two and a half almost. It's like Christmas on the weekend, New Year's on the weekend. So it's like you take the week before, week in the middle, and then it's like this week was kind of jacked up because like the Monday, everyone was everything was closed. Yep. Um. <clears throat> so it was just like dragging by. Granted, don't get me wrong, I love the holidays and the winter break, but. It's been nice to get caught up on a little thing. Yeah, I agree. It's like, let's take a little break. And then it's like, when you need things answered or like responses back from individuals, it's like, okay, I know it's a holiday week, but like, I know you're looking at this, like, just give me back some info so I can keep working on the project or whatever. It's also that like with launching quick bites, like I'm, I'm in the process of like getting stuff done and like, I have to have responses from people. And it was just like a waiting game for hello, knock, knock, anybody there. But yeah, um, what are your, uh, do you have any like outrageous goals or like mottos for the year? <laughs> um, no, but one thing that I really resonated with me that I've seen the last couple of weeks is like, don't fix it if it's not broken. Cause people always think they have like to be that. a new, new me, new year, new me, baby. But it's like, what if you don't have to be a new you? Like what if you're, you right now is great. Like just continue to do that. So that's kind of something I'm thinking about but I feel like um, your new year started like december one because you've been in a little bit better of a routine yeah and, oh like, for sure and joe rogan said this on his podcast recently like don't it's okay to use the new year as an excuse to like start some new habits and try some new things and like but at the same time it's like if something's broken fix it then and now don't wait a couple months until the new, new year yeah. to get started like i that resonates with me because like I feel like I've in a little bit, the last two years been in a little bit of like autopilot in ways. Yeah. And what I'm using this new year for is to like challenge myself to like break out of that box again, because, you know, I went from college to my CCIM stuff, which took another two to three years and then finished that and then got my broker's license last year. And then it's like, okay, you know, the rest, the second half of the year, I was kind of like cruise control autopilot. Like I want to start doing some different things and challenging myself. And like my motto for the year is like do hard shit. So like, I'm going to do some stuff that like really gets me outside of my comfort zone. New York city marathon, New York city marathons. One of those. So, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a new year. Like you said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. 
but also you can use it, use the excuse of like, it's a new year. Let's like try some new stuff. And I want to be like, one thing that I really want to focus on is like positivity this year. You know, like so many people January 1st in the gym. Oh, it's so freaking busy. Like I can't stand this. I'm like, yes, the gym's busy. People are caring about their health and wellness. This is a good thing. Don't yeah. bag on people if it's busy. Like honestly, positive. No. Well, I mean, I'm not sure if like the people that go that try to do it for the New Year's resolution. I don't know if they go at the same time that we do, but I didn't notice. Oh, the they do. Really? I haven't. I didn't Dude, notice January the 1st was a zoo in the gym. Really? The, it, the one I went it was to. Was Sunday? I slept it was in. A, it was a Sunday, and I was like, "Shit, there's a lot of people here." Were you at the Mecca or Axiom? I went to the Mecca. I've been like hooked. They've got some great equipment there recently, and well, uh, yeah, it's been. If I could have four gym memberships, I would too. But <laughs> he's just freelancing off of your buddies, <laughs> playing the game. Um, one of my big New Year's things, though, is I'm gonna I'm gonna cut back drastically on consuming artificial sweeteners. Ooh, I like that. So no more DCs then, huh? Correct. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, I'll enjoy Sorry, one. Sorry, Kush. I'll enjoy one when I'm like out to eat. But if I'm, you know, every day, like I'm just like, it's probably not great. So I feel you on that. There's like times where I've like consumed a lot of like soda, but then it's like diet soda. So I'm like, oh, it's not that bad for me. And then you kind of get in this like rhythm of like drinking one or two a day. And then you're like, <laughs> should really cut back on you this. And then you drink water for a week straight. And you like cut it out for a full week. And you're like, man, I feel better. Um, and then it doesn't even sound good sometimes, you know? Yeah. Like, like Brie, I was talking to Brie and I was like, hey, let's can like, can we stop buying it? At, like having it at the house. And she was like, can I just hide mine? I'm like, sure. Jeez. And Look she was like, you. and she was like, can you grab one? I was, she was like, can you grab me one? I was like, sure. And I grabbed it. I was like, I wouldn't even want to drink it right now. Granted, it's like first week, but I did have a bad headache for two days. Yeah. Like, so it's I probably the caffeine. Yeah. That's my guess. Uh, I had a coffee yesterday though. Um, but I just had like a regular latte coffee. I love coffee. Yeah. Do you I love coffee. I read that article about what we're going to be talking about and I was like, I need a coffee. Yeah. I, we should have gone to slow, even I though I already went to get coffee this morning. Did you go to slow? No, I actually reached out to you and Jake to see if you wanted to go to breakfast at the A Cafe. You didn't reach out to me? Yes, I did, but your uh, notifications were turned off. I didn't just, get a text. Just FO. I, yeah, because you had it silenced, bro. I know, but there's not a text uh, in here. Because uh, 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 I asked if you were going to work out and it was too late. Oh, oh yeah. You said you and Jake lift today? No, uh, a cafe. That's a cool little spot downtown. They've got a really good, like D town scramble, scrambled eggs, okay. peppers, and they've got just good drip coffee. Well, we'll have to do that soon. Yeah, Maybe like do that. more of a heads up, but yeah. Cause after you texted me, I went on a run and got ready for the day. Dominated. Made myself some breakfast. Riley's looking suave today. He had the matching necklace with the, Ooh, the bracelet even matches. So, yeah. Um, Christmas present? Let's hear about it. This? Yeah. No. You always had those? Yeah, I wear this every day. I like it. Uh, but the reason that I'm... So I have to bust out the navy pants this week because my black lulus have a big hole in the ass that I guess I right didn't away. notice. So I have to take those back. Squats, man. So <laughs> They'll get you. Yeah. So I'll have to, I'm having to style my wardrobe with navy pants, which is a little bit harder for me. Uh, it's outside of my comfort zone a little bit. So we got the scotch and soda, Cuban collar tea, or... Mm -hmm. Shirt. Is it a Cuban collar tee? It looks it's so good. It's a Cuban collar, yeah. It's great. I love Cuban collars. Granted, it's like more of a summer shirt, but it makes we're rocking you look it. like uh, like you're in the <laughs> the mafia or the something. Mafia, yeah, that's the word I was looking for. That's Anyways, funny. we're getting off track. Coffee 2023. 2023 is gonna be a great year. Let's do it. Yes, I uh, have you ever had protein in your coffee? <sighs> Here's the thing: if I'm gonna drink coffee, I'm gonna drink. Coffee. I'm not going to try to change it. I'm not going to put butter in it. I'm not going to do protein in it. I'm not going to do oat milk. Oh, macadamia nut milk is actually really good. But so not. it's like a macadamia nut latte in ways. Yeah. But like I would just drink that milk by itself, not in a coffee. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> but uh, yeah. It, yeah. So I read that article. Um, I can't remember who, what it, who wrote it. Coffee 2023. Yeah. Coffee 2023 trends. And it was like protein, but one of the things was like more milk substitutions. And I'm just like, how can we have more? Like, I, I remember it said soy was the first one. Yeah, um, I'll have a soy latte. It's healthier. That used to be a trend. I, remember. I know. Yeah. And then it became oat milk. And then, and then the bottle like, like automatically puts oat milk in their lattes. That pisses people off. Who? Oh, blue bottle. 
Oh, they, when really? you order a latte, they put oat milk in it. All right, Blue Bottle. <laughs> Come on, Blue Bottle. Um, That's why we well, stopped doing Blue Bottle with Blake. Yeah, because <laughs> soy milk was giving men tits, right? Or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> It's a good punch right pretty, there. <laughs> yeah. Don't order soy milk. You're going to get man boobs. <laughs> yeah, so that messes with your for that. <laughs> estrogen levels in a bad way. And then oat milk. Um, oat milk's fine. I know Starbucks has like their oat milk shaken espressos that Brie gets. Fire, by the way. <sighs> those are all right. Dude, they're good. Like Those just give me the buzz. When I drink one of those at like four in the <laughs> afternoon, I do not go to sleep at nine o'clock. Yeah, or like I'll do a nitro cold brew with like sweet cream in it. Yep. Ooh, sweet cream. Vanilla sweet cream. Yeah. I start and can't stop in the summertime. It's like the perfect amount, but a, a cold brew will like, I Get might as well just going. snort a line at yeah. that point because <laughs> it gives me the same effect. But yeah, like my, my go-to is obviously slow. Um, if I'm trying to pinch a penny though, for some reason, I will not go to slow. <laughs> slow is expensive. But you pay for you pay what you get for it. Like they got good quality coffee, great atmosphere. Right. Um, you know? We know, we know the dudes the behind the counter, you know? Yep. Yeah. So it's like, it's part of a culture there. Yeah. I, uh, you know what it takes me back to you talking about that real quick is when we went to VCon and we listened to Jesse Eltzer's, Itzler's speech and one of his top such a 15 like keys to like success in business is have like that go-to place and know everybody there know the regulars, know the baristas, know in, in whether that's a restaurant or a coffee shop or, you know, make a home outside your home. And that's a great way to grow business and grow relationships and get to know people, get comfortable meeting new people, talking to people. And it just like resonated with me. Like that's been like my home the last like 10 years, you know, it's kind of cool to like look back on that. And I've been doing that. I met so many people. I've made so many friends just from like being a regular at a place. That's crazy. I mean, 10 yeah. years ago, I was changing my pull up. So Jesus, um, Riley, yeah, you're probably still wet in the bed at 12, right? <laughs> um, but no, I think that's, uh, that speaks volumes. I don't have a ton of experience with that because like, I don't know. I didn't grow up downtown in the city. And I feel like there's more, there's more of like a culture thing down here where it's like talk to strangers and be friend, like, I just, yeah. it's kind of foreign to me to just go in and like, like more people eat alone downtown. So then you can kind of like, well that, and like, I didn't ever, I'm like, Oh, like become friends with the like the barista at the coffee shop. Like I didn't really, that was never like a yeah thing to me. And then, so it's still like an adjustment over the last couple of years, but I feel like a, we should do a challenge where we just like go into slow one day and we just like go up to a random Spend person. the whole day there. We're like, go up to a random person and just start talking. Yes. Cause like, I remember I was at like, I think one time I was like, at like the village coffee shop, whatever. And like someone came They need to, to improve me. their coffee, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, just like editing something on my laptop and doing my stuff. And some guy came up to me. He was like, Oh, what are you doing? And I was like, I like that. Like I liked when someone just like came up and said, Hey, what's up? Like, it's just kind of out of the blue. And I don't know. I think that's where I could do better. Yeah, I agree. Cause you never know what could transpire from like just a relationship or like a friendly hello, you know? Oh, for sure. Being a good person. Yeah. Sometimes you can, it can turn into something you yeah, don't you even never know. I don't know if I have experience with that, but I've no. heard some stories. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Village Coffee Improve. <laughs> you guys suck. It's like Royal I, Coffee now, right? Yeah, I hate when people are like, hey, let's meet at the Village Coffee. I'm like, oh, do I have to? <laughs> You're like, perfect, I'll get rice Like, works. sweet, I'm going to get <laughs> Starbucks on the way. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it in. Uh, our last segment of the day, we've got sports marketing. The reason I want to discuss this is because I have a little bit of a background in sports. I did a little bit of marketing study in college. I really like personal branding, social media. I just think that um, your personal brand will translate with you for your whole life the next 25 years. We're in this era of personal brand being uh, extremely valuable, not only from like, like the top level celebrity standpoint, but it gives you leverage in a lot of your networking, your business dealings, your connections in the world. And so what I foresee, you know, opening up the can of worms with 
sports, college athletes, NIL programs, what, you know, for simple people listening to this, like NIL stands for name, image, and likeness. So as an athlete in college, if you're an NCAA athlete, you weren't allowed to take money, gifts, things like that. Like you weren't allowed to be given things. You weren't allowed to sign autographs on footballs and sell them to kids. Like there were so many exclusive restrictions on athletes being paid, endorsed, making money until they got to the NFL or the NBA or WNBA, whatever that is. I think with the opening of this NIL situation, it's allowing athletes from a younger age to start to build a personal brand. And how do they do that? So many, uh, you know, when you're younger and you're an athlete, a lot of you guys can resonate with this. There isn't um, a lot of time to build a personal brand, but yet it's put out there in the media outlets now. I mean, you look at the Paul brothers, those guys built a personal brand, but they're both there as well. Like athletes, they can box, like they can do things like, I'm not saying you need to strive to be like those guys, but the ability to like build a brand, um, I think every athlete needs to focus on that because even without athletics in the future, you have something to lean on. A lot of athletes learn a lot of skills through athletics growing up that they have a hard time being able to translate those skills into the workforce. Me, for example, you know, big athlete growing up, played a lot of sports in high school, went to college. It took me five to seven years to figure out like, what the hell is my career going to be? And maybe if I was able to document and build a little bit of a personal brand growing up, not only to get paid in college athletics, which I didn't play, but to help translate that into like showing who I am and what I've learned and what I could do might help for an employer or like help a mentor mentor you, you know, just to learn a little bit about you. So where I'm going with this, Quick Bites Media, we feel that at our company, we can really bridge the gap of athletics and athletes and businesses. Because right now we've got, okay, sweet, you can go make money off your brand. Like, but how are you going to do it? Why are you going to do it? And like, how effectively can you do it is going to be like, what's important? Because Ultimately, I think that athletes don't need to be taken away from their sport to just go build this brand. They need to focus on their sport and they need some group or some person or some individual to help bridge that gap to help educate them on building a personal brand, how to spend their money. Let's say all of a sudden you start making five grand a month. Like, what are these college athletes going to do with that kind of money? Like, probably go blow it on cars and toys and drinks at the club if you're a senior. So what we're trying to do at Quick Bites Media is really educate and help athletes grow from how to work with brands and how to capture those moments and create positive, you know, attention from the athletic standpoint as well as a business standpoint. Because what I'm seeing a lot of in this world right now is these athletes go, oh, sweet, I can finally make money on my personal brand. Let me go to the Ford dealership and see if they'll lend me a car to drive. Like, where is the value back and forth? Okay, sweet. Like the star quarterback at Boise State is driving a Ford. Oh, I, I'm not going to go buy a Ford because he's driving a Ford. Like there's a, there's a level of education that, okay, well, maybe we can spin this off and create some creative aspects of building a brand with an individual. We want to make sure that that individual is focused on it, not just a money grab, you know? So there's also this gray area of like, there's so much money pouring into NIL. How can we like help these athletes like make decisions? What's beneficial long-term for these athletes, you know? So I know I'm spewing a lot here, but it's on my mind. I have spent a lot of time researching it, reading about it. It's fascinating to me, you know, when bridging that gap between athletes and businesses, the missing piece of that is a good production company, a good media marketing company. Agents have been very important in the past and they still are for athletes growing to the next level from a like contract standpoint, dealings with the NBA or the NFL or like helping athletes get to that next level. But I think there's going to be this new revolution in agency that's going to be kind of like sports branding and marketing. And these athletes are going to look to hire these companies you know, quick bites, media, quick bites, athletes, whatever we kind of start to put together on this 
to help athletes bridge that gap, make certain decisions on who they want to work with business-wise, how they're going to navigate it, working hand-in-hand with an agency staff, potentially, to help athletes grow to the next level. So I know I'm spewing about it today, but it's like really interesting to me. I think that we at Quick Bites Media have a lot to offer from not only connections, but the ability to help these athletes build a personal brand. You know, there's a lot of people out there trying to bridge the gap of businesses and athletes and trying to make cuts of that. But guess what? We're here to help you build a brand that's going to last a lifetime, not just your four years of your college degree or your college, you know, athletic experience. So what do you think, Riley? Uh, I think a really cool way that athletes could run with that is build their personal brand through college and then like transition it into their after like post athletic life. Right. Like whether they go to the NFL or not or whatever. Like if I was like, you know, like Tom Brady, like he's going to continue to be present on social media after the NFL. Like I want to see more like college athletes that like everybody here in Boise loves Boise state football. Like everybody there's, they're paying attention. And like, I feel like let's just take Taylor for example, if he, built this great brand. Is he a freshman? Sophomore. Going to do sophomore. No, obviously. Year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So like if, you know, he's building his, if he's building his brand these next two, three years and then goes to the NFL, great, continue to build that brand. And then he's like, Hey, I'm starting this company, blah, 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 blah. Now after, and it's like, Oh yeah, I'm going to continue to follow Taylor. And then it's just like the lifetime value. Exactly. Here we go. Two prime examples of this. You look at, you know, the last five years of athletics, you know, let's, let's name a few. And I don't mind saying these names, Elliot Hoyt, amazing football player at Boise state had great potential to play in the NFL, had some back injuries, nothing he can control, but guess what? He didn't have a personal brand. He didn't have an ability to market himself in the college level without breaking certain NCAA rules, not necessarily to make money, but building a personal brand for himself where he had this transitionary period after college football for, you know, three to five years that he leaned on, you know, recreating himself in the auto industry. He went and sold cars for Porsche or for Lyle Pearson and was selling Porsches. And I, from my recognition, you know, a good portion of his clientele base knew him through athletics a little bit, but a good portion didn't. And to be able to use that leverage of your experience, you know, not putting all your eggs in one basket saying, Oh, I was on, you know, the team that won the Fiesta Bowl, yada, yada, yada. But just having a track record, I think is so important, not only in an athletic career, but like a business career too. Like when someone's watching your film from high school, they're, they're looking at your film. They're probably looking at your Instagram account. They're looking at your Twitter. They're looking at your Facebook, if you still have one. But, you know, Elliot's a great example of that. And then let's use the other example of Matt Bauscher. Like he is one of the most dominant forces in the residential real estate world in Boise, not only because of his excelling work ethic and like grinding, it's because he has connections, you know? And if he, you know, I remember sitting down talking with him, it took him three to four years to build his real estate business to where it was like to a point where it was like really noticeable in the Valley. In that four years could have been cut down to one to two if he could have had a personal brand, could have had even more connections locally. I mean, when you've got 30, 40,000 followers, that's like the same thing as filling a stadium attention wise, you know? And if, if all of a sudden he transitioned in real estate and would provide value to his clients and customer base, that three to four years could have been cut to 12 months. You know, he could have been, you know, obviously there's learning a new industry that plays into that timeline a little bit, but I like using those examples of athletes that didn't have the ability to build personal brands, you know, where it is today and like how that could expedite certain things in the, in the real world, you know, and to talk context a little bit, athletic background, Riley doesn't have an athletic background, didn't go to college, but has extreme skills in a world that's evolving in an industry that's like changing a ton right now with media. Yeah. I think one thing that we're really going to be able to help athletes with is leverage. Um, because like, like you said, okay, they can go get a lease on a F-150 for two years and then, or well, you know, a year, however long yeah, they want to keep it. Yeah, let me drive it. a car for you. 
okay, well, as a dealership, granted, yeah, that's not going to cost me any money in the long term, but am I getting any value out of that? Right. Probably not if you're posting one photo and then that's just done. <laughs> um, I think it needs to be a it needs to be a public relationship. Like you need to see that relationship. They need to go do things. Um, like for like, let's just take Boise Juice Co. for example. Let's say no, let's do the Talon and Lean Feast. Let's say Lean Feast drips Talon out and some merch, some Lean Feast stuff, and then they're going out and doing this community event, and then they got the Lean Feast everywhere, and it's also Talon, and it's like there's these things happening. There's, yeah. there's just none of that right now, and I think there could be a lot. More There's a lot of like there. one hit wonders in NIL right now. It's like, yeah, sweet brand deal, couple thousand dollars, swag, free meals, like bam, month later, nothing, crickets. It's like, no, how let's, like, do build some stuff exactly? Let's do and something. I, and I've seen this in like to compare like the NFT space a little bit. Like, I like using Vayner Sports as kind of like that target trajectory because they do a phenomenal job representing athletes on the top scale. I don't think that they've gotten into some college NIL stuff, but like some of these athletes that are signing with Vayner sports, they're not just an agency. They're a marketing media company with agency tied into it. And I think that that's where college, even high school, high school athletics marketing and agency is going. It's like the combination of how can we provide value long term for these brands like being a vayner sports pass member there's like a professional athlete once a week that gets on a live like twitter spaces and they just do q a for an hour and they answer questions and it's really cool to be able to log in through the discord and through these channels to like hear insight from professional athletes you know i just have an intrigue in sports yeah. so it's like oh what do these people's daily lives look like they're pretty normal to be honest with you even though they're superstars, you know, MMA fighters, you know, professional football players. Like, it's just interesting to hear some insight about like their lives and what they do on a daily basis. Some of their interests, some of their hobbies outside of sports. Like I've been following this guy on Twitter recently. He's the strip center retail guy. He finally, you know, he's been anonymous for X amount of years. He finally announced who he was and he's the long snapper for like the Buffalo bills or something. He's an NFL player, but he has this anonymous profile on Twitter as a real estate guy. That's and crazy. he's, he's heavily invested in retail real estate. So it's like, who would have ever known that? I didn't know that. And it's just kind of super interesting to me that like, we have this world of like being able to build brands for an anonymous perspective as well as like personally and then finally like bridging the gap of that and like it's kind of cool twitter threatened that any anonymous accounts are going to get canceled and they're going to need some verification because then it's allowed some of those people to come out and say who they really are and i think it's beneficial to know that you know it's like okay where is this source like who yeah. is this real person you know so that's cool i don't know that's a lot there's it's loaded. a there's a lot it's loaded you guys will be seeing a lot um, this year of this journey. Um, yeah, so we're very, very excited to tap into that industry and and change it. Those listening to this podcast, um, this NIL stuff is really fascinating to me, and we're taking questions, we're taking comments, we're just trying to gain a lot of information right now from athletes as well as brands on how we as a marketing and media company can help facilitate um, good positive relationships amongst athletes and brands because it's such a new space. There's a lot of legal stuff that we're working through just to make sure that we're doing it the right way. Um, but we're open to your feedback. We're excited about the future. And, uh, you know, athletes getting paid is, is one thing, but athletes building a brand is totally different. And that's what I want to focus on. Yeah making building their brand creating an image exactly. not just cha-ching every month yeah that's exactly. a byproduct but that's not the goal then we can teach fun investing classes yeah then we go to real estate then we go to the back end and we're like all right now you have this money what are you going to do with it don't go spend it on don't go buy options on yeah. the stock market <laughs> all right, okay i pod. uh took over the podcast yeah but like, i need you to take it over and then 
Because I probably, we might need Charlie to do a little auto tune on my voice if it sounds, maybe it's like more of a radio voice today than it normally is because I'm usually I'm pretty high pitched, but True, today, maybe it's better. today it like leveled it out. I sound like a man today. <laughs> That's funny. Quick Bites out. Quick Bites out.